I prefer to build my own speakers, so today I'll share one of my projects with you. Hello there, my name is Sorin and in this episode I'm going to show you how I've made these two powerful mini speakers using this tiny amplifier circuit board with a total output power of 6 watts. A few years ago I've bought these Genius or Genius mini speakers. They actually are pretty good as they are, with very rare and powerful 8 ohm speaker drivers. But I used the circuit board to make this portable mini amplifier. Now I'm left with two 50mm 8 ohm mini speakers. What to do with them? Well, first let's check out my Bux O mini speakers. I have another pair of speaker drivers which are very similar. They all have 8 ohms, actually 7, but that's good enough. What do we need for this project? The main component is this PAM8403 digital amplifier. It's very small and can be powered with an USB cable. This tiny amplifier is very powerful. It can deliver 3 watts per channel and it has a very low price, especially if you buy more pieces at once. It works with 4 ohms and 8 ohm speaker drivers, so it's perfect for my project. I've placed purchase links in the video description for you. What else do we need? A 50 kilo ohms dual potentiometer for the volume level. You can also get the amplifier with volume potentiometer included. Or you can just use one from an old PC speaker system. I think I will salvage the LED as well. A switch is optional, but it's useful because you don't need to unplug the USB cable every time you stop using the speakers. The amplifier will be powered with 5 volts. You can use any type of USB cable you no longer need. You can also use any type of stereo cable with 3.5mm jack. And this is the schematic for my mini speaker system. First of all we need to test the amplifier. I'll temporarily connect the speakers with test leads. Enough testing! For the speaker box I'll use this laminate floorboard I no longer need. It has a thickness of 8mm. Remember to always use protective goggles when working with power tools. First let's get rid of the unusable edge. Now let's decide the front panel size. I would say that 6 by 16 cm will suffice. For the speaker holes I'll use this hole saw drill set. Remove all the blades, then mount only the correct one. First we drill a smaller hole to mark the spot for the speaker hole. It's better if you drill the holes from both sides, it will prevent damaging the hole's edge. Now let's mark and cut all the pieces. After cutting the pieces, use a wood file to make the edges smoother. We need a hole for the potentiometer, but don't go through the board. Use a smaller drill bit to leave a groove for the potentiometer to be mounted on. We also need a 3mm hole for the LED. Here we have two basic solder tubes. This will be perfect for the base reflex tubes. This is ABS edge bending tape. It's used to cover all the edges on furniture to give it a wooden look. I want my speakers to have a wooden look, so let's use some. Because it has a width of 20mm, I'll cut all the ABS pieces in half and cover two edges with one piece. You don't need any glue, just use a steam iron to heat them up, preferably an old iron. When the ABS is heated, it sticks itself to the board. Easy, right? After the ABS cools down, use a box cutter to remove the excess material. Be careful with your fingers. I've done this a lot of times, so don't worry about me.
To make the speaker hole smoother, use 600 grit sandpaper. It's time to mount the speaker box. First, I'll use a small amount of hot glue to stick the panels in position. The panels will be tightened with thin screws. I'll drill some 2mm holes for them. At this point, the front and back panels will be used only to keep the side panels in position so I can drill the holes. And I'll use a thicker drill bit to hide the screw head. It's time for the front panels. You can just glue the speaker drivers to the panel, but I prefer to mount them with screws. I need to be very precise when marking the holes for the screws. If the speaker drivers are not centered, the finished product will not look good. Be careful when drilling these holes. Don't go through the board. 4 or 5 millimeters are enough. I'll use some tiny screws and washers to mount the speaker drivers. The LED will be connected with a 680 ohms resistor. I don't want the red light to poke my eye. Use some shrinking tubes as well. This type of hot glue is very elastic. It's perfect to absorb the speaker vibrations. For the best sound quality we need to seal the speaker enclosure. So I'll use hot glue on every hole and jointing. Even on the LED. The two speaker drivers will be connected in parallel. Together they will have an impedance of 4 ohms, which is ok for this small amplifier. See? 4 ohms. Almost. As I did before, I'll stick the panels together with a small amount of hot glue. Then tighten them with one screw on each side. The interior must be sealed with hot glue. The base reflex tubes are ready. I'll just force them in position and seal them. On the back panel we add the switch and seal it. The amplifier circuit board will be fixed on the back panel near the switch. I will use this 1000 microfarads capacitor to smooth out the amplifier power supply voltage. I don't know what kind of power sources I will use in the future with this speaker system and if the voltage is not stable enough, this capacitor will help. For the best sound quality that these speaker drivers can deliver, we need to insulate the interior. I'll use this simple sponge. I know that this is not the best insulating material, but it's better than nothing. So I'll cut some thin pieces of sponge and glue them on the interior side of every panel. Don't forget to insert the cables through the back panel. Solder the wires on the amplifier circuit board and try to use shrinking tubes as often as you can. The potentiometer pins are too long, so I will bend them. This way I can solder the wires more easily. To connect any volume potentiometer, use this simple schematic. And this is the insulated interior of my speakers. Do you think it will make any difference? The speakers are almost finished. I need to connect the potentiometer and fix it in position. The back panel will also be fixed with screws and sealed with hot glue.
I like this type of black knob for the potentiometer. Let's give the speakers some self-adhesive rubber pads. And this is the finished product. They aren't actually much bigger than the original speakers, just a few centimeters taller. It's very difficult to show you the sound quality of these speakers through a video on the internet. Keep in mind some quality will be lost through recording, editing, processing the video by YouTube and finally your audio system. But I will do my best with this studio microphone. Let's compare it with this brand new mini speaker system. Apparently this one also has 3 watts per channel. Let's put them to the test. I will connect both of them with this double stereo adapter. There is quite a difference. Let's test the current consumption. Almost 200 milliamps at maximum volume. So you can easily use them with a power bank or more commonly with an USB phone charger. The door lock module is attached to this panel, so be careful when you remove them. You can also use the USB port from your computer, but there's a catch. If the amplifier and audio source share the same power source, you will get a ground loop effect. That means you'll have a small buzzing sound, which can be heard at lower volume levels like this. All USB speakers have this problem. If this really annoys you, just use a different power source, like a phone charger. I know it's a lot of work, but if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see me making more projects like this, click the like button and subscribe to my channel.